Emergency medical services are very crucial in our lives. However, the services become even more important during heavy rains and the busy time of the festive season. Good evening, my name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we discuss the safety of the public during these heavy rains and the approach of festive season. Joining us in studio via Zoom is Mr. Robert Mulaudzi, who is the spokesperson of the city of Johannesburg EMS. Mr. Robert, welcome to Soweto Today and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much for inviting us. Now, sir, please take us through the process of what, um, what does the EMS do when they first arrive on an accident scene or at, at any scene that needs your, your kind of services? Yeah, as the city of Johannesburg uh, Emergency Management Services, we have got a responsibility or a mandate to render effective uh, ambulance and uh, firefighting services to all uh, the residents of the city of Johannesburg. So it will be medical emergencies where we uh, go to different households uh, where if our uh, residents need medical attention, it can be any other medical condition which uh, our residents might have. We are responsible to respond to those incidents. And also if there is any fire incidents in our communities or motor vehicle accidents, we are able to uh, respond to those kind of uh, uh, incidents. So I would say uh, that would be uh, the core. And of course, there is another leg, uh, which is mostly our uh, community empowerment to make sure that uh, our residents are also empowered with uh, the necessary skills to deal with emergencies. That would be uh, the proactive side or the public education side where we go out to our communities to educate them about um, the importance of uh, adhering to safety precautions as and when, uh, you know, uh, we have any situations like uh, winter season and also uh, summer seasons when we have a lot of rainfalls and also when we have a lot of uh, fire incidents. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are aware that uh, during these heavy rains, the EMS will be in demand in attending scenes, and especially, especially in flooded areas. What tips do you have for people who are at most risk? Yeah, uh, most, most of our residents who are mostly in our uh, 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 informal settlements will be there with the hardest hits because most of our informal settlements are in a flood line. So... Uh, our residents in our in those areas will have to be cautious, make sure that uh, they monitor the water levels in those areas and move to the higher ground. And also, uh, from our side, if it was with us, we could uh, try and advise them not to build in those areas because when, as and when we have rainfalls, we normally have flooding in those areas. And also to monitor young kids to stay away from uh, playing next to river streams uh, because most of our informal settlements be it in Soweto and uh, as a uh, city of Johannesburg in general, most of our our informal settlements, we have got like river streams, which is cutting across those areas. Like for instance, if you look at uh, Clip Town informal settlement, there's a Clip Valley river stream, which is cutting across. If you look at Alexander, there's Jack's Cay. If you look at um, Ivory Park, there is Calfontaine river stream. So those communities already are prone to uh, flash floods when we have uh, severe thunderstorms like the ones we have now and also uh, you know they are prone to drowning incidents because kids are tempted to play you know next to these uh, river streams in the process they might actually drown mm -hmm. so um are there any programs that um, currently put in place and ensuring that people are educated particular communities on how to handle the patients while waiting for an ambulance to arrive in case of an emergency yeah, in the city of Johannesburg, we have adopted a strategy. We call it uh, a prevention is the future. Um, so where we focusing, we're putting more energy on uh, em empowering our communities, making sure that our residents have got the necessary skills. So uh, that line, we're taking it with the uh, introduction of PG uh, safe centers in all the re seven regions of the city of Johannesburg. So B safe centers are centers which are designed to educate our residents about firstly, life and fire safety educational programs. Can be basic first aid, it can be a basic firefighting. We are not training them to be paramedics, but we are training them to 
have the necessary skills to deal with emergencies. For instance, if there's a need for them to do CPR, they can be able to do that. Uh, stop bleeding if somebody's bleeding. If there's a fire, they can be able to use a fire extinguisher or a bucket of water to extinguish that fire. So we're giving them those necessary skills so that they are able to deal with emergencies as and when they okay. So these be safe centers are within our communities. In Soweto, we do have it in Chabulani, the Chabulani Fire Station, and also at the Dube Vocational Center, we've got another uh, be safe centers. And also throughout the city, we've got these centers in all seven regions of the city. Most of them are based at the fire station, like in Ivory Park, we've got it at the fire station in Ivory Park, we've got it in Rennberg, we've got it in Beria, and almost all the regions in the city of Johannesburg. So our communities are encouraged to visit these centers to be able to be trained for free uh, about any other programs which we, uh, we're offering, like uh, basic first aid and uh, um, you know, ba uh, basic firefighting, mm -hmm. so that they can be able to deal with uh, emergencies in their areas as and when they're okay. Mm -hmm. so, so, so under normal circumstances, you know, when it's not festive season or when we're not experiencing heavy rains, we usually hear of cases of people saying that, you know, they try to call the ambulance. Sometimes it's not available. Uh, sometimes they'll be told that there's a shortage. Um, there's about maybe four ambulances catering for a specific area. And for that reason, you know, the patient wouldn't be attended to. Um, what are you doing as a department to make sure that you work on that? Because now you'll be hearing cases of people, you know, who are, you know, been involved in accidents and also people that have been involved in floods. What are you doing as a department to make sure that you combat that? Okay. Uh, in the city of Johannesburg, uh, initially we were uh, running the ambulance service uh, under... Uh, as an agency under the Department of Health, which is Housing Provincial uh, Government. Right now, um, if you, I think you have read or you have seen that uh, the ambulance service is a competency of uh, the Department of Health, uh, which is the provincial government. So, uh, in all the three big metros in Gauteng, uh, which is uh, Johannesburg, Ekuruleni, and also uh, Tswane, the province has already taken over that responsibility of running medical service. Even though from our side, we do have ambulances which belong to the city, but right now we don't have the necessary license to be able to operate since uh, the province have taken over that responsibility. So right now, as the metro, as the three big metros, the only area which we are responsible for is the only the fire service. And the ambulance part will be uh, responsibility of the provincial government, which is uh, the Gauteng in e Mr. EMS. Mr. Molaudzi, I'll have to cut you short there. Obviously, the conversation will continue. Now, the Gauteng EMS on average receives over 47,000 annual calls for November and December, respectively. Most of the calls received during this period are for motor vehicle accidents, assaults and gunshot wounds. Now, after the air break, we will continue with the conversation with Mr. Robert Molaudzi, who is the spokesperson of the City of Johannesburg EMS. So, do stay with us. Welcome back. You are still watching Soweto today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you've just tuned in, we are you're not too late, so gladly so. We are talking about how to keep us safe during this festive season, and we are still joined in studio via Zoom by the City of Johannesburg EMS spokesperson, Mr. Robert Mulaudi. Now, Mr. Robert, last year, um, the Gauteng Emergency Medical Services launched a newly equipped fleet of about 220 ambulances as part of their festive season readiness program. Now, for this year's program what is going to be different what are your plans so far mr molaudzi yeah um uh, can you hear me yes i can hear you did you get my question yes yes did uh, the the as i said earlier on that uh, uh, us as the three metros uh, in Gauteng, meaning uh, Tswane, Johannesburg, and uh, Ekuruleni, we are no longer running the medical services, the medical emergency services. Uh, we are only running the, the fire services since uh, the Gauteng EMS has actually provincialized the medical services, meaning that the province is the only uh, they are the only ones who are providing emergency medical services in all 
the residents of Gauteng. So us as the uh, municipalities, we are only focusing now on the fire services. Um, speaking about fire services, you know, fire cracks, obviously it's festive season now. Uh, fire cracks is one of the most harmful objects that too many people use during the festive season. Now, what tips do you have for fire crackers to make sure that they use them safely? Yeah, uh, fire, fire crackers are mostly, you know, dangerous explosives, which are, of course, uh, governed by the South African Police Explo Explosive Act. And then uh, for us as the municipality, as the city of Johannesburg, we've got uh, bylaws which regulates the safe use of fireworks uh, within our communities. So it's very important for our residents to understand that there are stipulated times where residents are allowed to use fireworks, firstly. And of course, those fireworks, they are expected to use them safely. So our residents must be aware that fireworks are dangerous explosives which uh, if they are used unsafely, people can lose their hands, people can lose their limbs, and in some instances, people can even lose their lives while they're using this firework. So it's important for uh, adults and parents out there not to give young children fireworks to ignite. Uh, instead, we encourage them to visit area, display areas, mostly in around uh, the festive season or during the New Year celebration, uh, New Year's Eve, there will be areas where people can be able to go and visit where uh, they can be able to watch their fireworks displays uh, safely without letting kids, young kids, ignite these fireworks to avoid uh, situations where uh, young kids might be injured. Even adults who are using the uh, fireworks under the influence of alcohol, they might be in danger of injuring themselves while they're using these fireworks. So it's important for residents to refrain from uh, using uh, you know, these fireworks while they're, they're under the influence of alcohol. Now, they, according to the city's bylaws, there are uh, times which are stipulated according to the bylaws. You don't just ignite the fireworks uh, from the morning up until uh, the following day, you know, uh, disturbing other residents who are, with the, who are doing their normal day-to-day -day business. There's uh, regulated times which residents are allowed to ignite the fireworks which is an hour before midnight and an hour after midnight. That is on the New Year's Eve. And then from there, they are, you are allowed to use fireworks between uh, 7th and 10th on the New Year's Eve, uh, day. And then after that, uh, residents are not allowed to use fireworks. If they, it is any other residents who are continue to use fireworks, you know, unsafely or, or outside the uh, stipulated times, our residents can be able to call 011-758-5818. And then um, our colleagues from the JMPD can be able to attend uh, to those kind of uh, complaints. But uh, according to the fireworks, those will be the uh, uh, bylaws, those will be the stipulated terms which our residents are allowed to use uh, uh, fireworks. And of course, fireworks... Our residents are encouraged to buy these fireworks from reputable hardware stores. Mm -hmm. uh, fireworks, we don't put the fireworks on a bucket. Mm -hmm. uh, fireworks are supposed to be stored on a, a glass. If you walk into a store which is selling fireworks, you'll see there's a glass a cabinet in front of you there mm -hmm. where those fireworks are stored there because uh, they are highly flammable. They can cause fire. And in that store, uh, the store owner will have a compliance certificate which is coming from us as the emergency services and also a compliance certificate which is coming from a uh, south african police service mm -hmm. if you don't have those uh, documents you don't comply to sell fireworks therefore uh, we are forced to confiscate those fireworks to be able to make sure that we prevent fire incidents which might okay because if you comply mm -hmm. you will have to have all those uh, uh, fire service equipment like fire extinguishers and uh, mm -hmm. all required resources to make sure that you don't have a fire in that area where you're storing uh, those fireworks and you are storing enough uh, fireworks which might not cause fire incidents. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Malaudzi, let, let's talk about the previous years. We are aware that 2020, not many activities were done, especially during the festive season because of COVID-19. And then fast forward to 2021, where people were getting excited of now being you know, allowed to be with their families and, and during their festivities. Um, we want to understand that what are some of the injuries that are caused by fire cracks that you had to deal with 
you know, in the previous year? Yeah, in the, in the previous years, we have had a number of incidents, uh, especially in Soweto, mm -hmm. uh, where we have had people, young kids, losing their hands uh, because of uh, explosion of fireworks. We have had, uh, you know, even adults uh, being injured because or most of them were using uh, fireworks while they are under the influence of alcohol. This thing can actually explode on you. You can actually even lose their lives. But unfortunately, fortunately, we didn't have incidences where people died, but uh, we have had a number of incidents where people were injured, which we had to respond to those incidents. Now that uh, this year we will be celebrating this coming year freely without COVID-19 regulations, mm -hmm. we are expecting to have even, even more uh, injuries or people being injured because it, it has been long, you know, since we will be celebrating, you know, the coming year freely without uh, the regulations of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. It's very important also for our residents. I know Runabo Daki, we are not really worried about animals. You know, a dog is a dog with us, mm -hmm. you know, so it's very important for us to make sure that if we've got animals, we look after them. Mm -hmm. We take the animals to your uh, animals welfare organizations mm -hmm. where they can be able to keep them mm -hmm. uh, during this time of uh, celebrations so that uh, animals are not traumatized because uh, in most of the cases, especially in our, you know, black townships, mm -hmm. you know, it can be Soweto, Kailisha, anywhere where it's a black township, you find out that, you know, our residents out there, they normally even place these fireworks on top of these animals and they ignite them mm. in the process you know that animal mm -hmm. will be running around you know in, in the community traumatized so i'll have to you know cut you short there um i'll give you time after the ad break now in a medical emergency the time it takes um for emergency services to respond could be the difference between survival or death ambulance response time is a global benchmark of efficiency after the ad break we will continue with the conversation do you stay with us Welcome back. You are still watching Soweto today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Unfortunately, we are almost at the end of the show and we are still discussing how to keep safe during this festive season. We are still joined in studio via Zoom by the City of Johannesburg EMS, uh, EMS, EMS rather, spokesperson, Mr. Robert Mulaudzi. Now, sir, so there's a question that I wanted to ask you before the ad break, but unfortunately we had to, um, you know, go to an ad break. So to make sure that um, the viewers at home understand the word emergency, because some people really do not understand what emergency actually means. Um, in what situation can one be able to pick up their phone and say, this is an emergency, I need to call the EMS now? Okay, in, uh, there will be two emergencies. One, it might be a, a situation where there's a fire at home, mm -hmm. uh, the house is on fire, or a vehicle or any other item is on fire at home. Uh, the residents are, can be able to call the emergency services. And also, if there is a turning emergency, let's say, for instance, somebody is sick in a way that uh, that person might lose uh, his or her life, then uh, residents are allowed to call uh, emergency services. But if it's a situation where a resident can be able to uh, visit a local clinic, maybe a resident has got a headache, uh, they can be able to, to visit the local clinic to be attended to. If, for you to call an emergency or an ambulance or you need to be in a situation where it's a life-threatening emergency. That is where you can be able to call uh, emergency services. But for minor emergencies, you can just drive yourself or walk yourself into your nearest healthcare facility for further medical care. Mm -hmm. Now, um, research shows that um, EMS workers have high rates of fatal injuries and non-fatal injuries and illnesses. What job hazards do EM EMS workers face? Yeah, there's a lot of hazards, you know, um, you can be able to uh, be infected by with any other disease which uh, your patients which you are treating might have. You can actually lose your life while in the line of duty, maybe while responding to an incident and also while you are already there. I mean, we've had an incident, a lot of incidents where paramedics were attacked, raped, mugged, you know, is equipment stolen. So those will be uh, some of the a danger which uh, emergency services face on a day-to-day -day basis and also attacks on a day-to-day -day basis because lately um, uh, residents are attacking paramedics on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, uh, taking the equipment which they are using and also 
you know, robbing them of uh, their belongings, which might, they might have at the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us about this, um, um, the health and other services personnel trade unions of South Africa that are working to prevent EMS injuries. What are they doing to ensure that, you know, you guys are safe when you are on duty? I, I wouldn't be able to, you know, explain in terms of the other organizations, which should be especially in labor, um, you know, but there are a number of uh, labor organizations within uh, the space emergency services space, even in the municipality level. We do have those organized labor who normally uh, represents uh, the well-being and the welfare of, uh, you know, emergency services workers. So I think that one, I will leave it to the, the organized labor to be able to comment further about it. Mm -hmm. So now during the EMS training sessions that you usually have, what are some of the safety tips do you give to your workers? Of course, the, the, uh, our um, the EMS personnel are trained in terms of making sure that they we render professional emergency uh, services and also most importantly to look after themselves make sure that uh, the areas which they are responding to is safer for them firstly before they even attempt to those to get into those areas if the area is deemed to be uh, volatile uh, uh, the, the e emergency services worker are expected to activate a support from the local police can be a metropolitan police or south african police service to accompany them to those areas hence sometimes uh, we might be delayed because we're still waiting for an escort uh, to be able to accompany us to a specific area, especially in um, situations where by the shooting incidents, we are supposed to make sure that when we respond to those areas, we have the, the necessary support of the South African Police Service or the Metropolitan Police to escort us to respond to those emergencies. Mm -hmm. So what information should a person have whenever or rather before calling in the EMS for help? Uh, firstly, is, a, is the address, where that person is, the physical address, um, and also, you know, the landmark. If, let's say, there's no street names, you might be able to identify, to say, next to Robert Mulaudzi's puzzle shop or whatever, a beer hall or a portal store or something like that, or Karaikiyako Zioni or whatever, any possible landmark which emergency services will be able to identify with if there's no formal addresses, because emergency services don't respond only to areas which are formal, we also respond to informal settlements where there's no strict addresses, but we use landmarks, as I explained earlier. If it's a formal area, you will have a street name, address, and also you need to have, uh, be able to describe what is happening in front of you, what you see, so that the uh, emergency services personnel on the other side can be able to take the necessary details and after that can be able to send the required resources to where you are. And of course, you don't have to panic. Uh, you have to remain calm so that uh, the next person who's listening to you on the other side can be able to get all the necessary information. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence, Mr. Malawzi. My pleasure. Thank you very much for hosting us. Right, we do hope that people have taken some notes at home and they will make sure that they are safe during this festive season. Now, that was the spokesperson of the city of Johannesburg, Mr. Robert Mulaudzi, helping us with all the information you need to know about EMS and how to stay safe during this festive season. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to engage with us about the show by simply sending us an email on Soweto Today at sowetotv.co.za. Alternative you can contact us on 011-9333000. From myself and the rest of the team, we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after this. So goodbye for now and thank you for watching.